This morning, the Israel Defense Forces is reporting more than 1,400 people have died and more than 3,500 others have been injured. Palestinian Ministry of Health reports more than 2,300 people have been killed in Gaza and more than 9,000 injured. Now, religious communities around the world are coming together in solidarity, praying for peace and for the people in Israel and Gaza. A panel of religious leaders is here to discuss more. And joining us now, Reverend Dr. Jackie Lewis, Senior Minister of Middle Collegiate Church, Rabbi Joshua Stanton, Rabbi of East End Temple, and Hussein Rashid, academic, speaker, and educator. Thank you all very much for being on the show this morning. This question is for all three of you. There is a lot of division over supporting Israel and, and Gaza and Palestinians. How should we approach this? Um, uh, Reverend Lewis, you go first. Yeah, thank you so much for having us on, uh, friends. I think we have to approach it from our deepest values, and we share these values. In my research on a religion, all the world's major religions have something about loving your neighbor as yourself. Uh, in Judaism, uh, it's love the stranger because you were once strangers in a strange land. My Islamic friends say, don't withhold anything from someone that you need for yourself. And we as Christians kind of cheat with both of those thoughts and say, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. So I think this has to be a filter through the lens of what it means to love one another. And Josh and Hussein and I practice mm -hmm. that kind of fierce revolutionary love in which our camaraderie and our collegiality and our friendship guides our conversations and our actions. Mm -hmm. Rabbi Stanton? So we are, of course, praying for all those who have been the victims directly or indirectly of Hamas's attack in Israel. And that does not keep me as a rabbi from praying for all of the Palestinian civilians who are being impacted in really awful ways. This is a moment for opening our hearts and our minds. This is a moment for radical compassion and love. This is a moment to figure out what we do have in common across religious traditions. So yes, I love and I support Israel, and that does not mean that I need to hate my neighbors, hate my friends who are Palestinian or Arab or Muslim. And, and Mr. Rashid. Yeah, thank you uh, for having us on. I think uh, just to echo what my colleagues have said is when we look at this as a national conflict, we are going to choose sides based on national lines. And I think what we're calling people to do is look at the human cost of this. How do I grieve with my friends who are from Israel as I'm grieving as I have for many years with my friends who are from Palestine? As I'm hearing my friends who have had hostages, who uh, who's had families taken as hostages, and as I hear from my Palestinian friends who, yesterday literally I got a report, 30 members of his extended family were killed. How do I sit grieving both of these and say, how do I choose sides and still work towards a just peace that recognizes that the real grievances here, that we can move beyond? Reverend Lewis, this is Katie Fang. I, I'm, I'm, I want help. I want some advice from you and from all of you, frankly. Um, when people say that it's actually religion that is the problem, though, right? When people try to say that it isn't just a land war, that it's actually more of a holy war, that, that that's kind of the, the crux of what's going on here, what do we say in response to those types of criticisms? Katie, that's an excellent question. And the truth of the matter is that our holy texts do put on page a sense of land, identity, belonging, who's entitled to the space. So religion is a problem. As a religious leader, I'll say it can be hugely problematic. If we don't keep listening for the still speaking God, if we don't use our rationale and our hearts and our minds to understand what these texts mean, and if we do that, we see that the God we all call one God, want space, place, time, love, flourishing, abundant life for all of us. So I think we need modern critiques of ancient patterns. You know, as you all are very well aware, Jerusalem is one of the oldest cities in the world. It's changed hands many times throughout its 5,000 year history. I'm just wondering, how is this current conflict, this war between Israel and Hamas, reflective of that past? Or, or is it? Mr. Rashid. I, uh, I think trying to frame this as a religious conflict keeps us from 
moving beyond what is at stake right now, which is mm -hmm. that there is a campaign of people killing people. And it's under the veneer of religion. And for some people, this is a very important religious issue. But what do you do with Palestinian Christians, with Palestinian atheists, with secular Jews who are not necessarily in this from a religious perspective? How do these people fit into the equation? And I think we have to take seriously the idea that Jerusalem is incredibly important as a religious site and that you cannot kill in the name of peace. It seems counterintuitive, and I think we have to emphasize that. And we can't take that religious illiteracy, this idea that because somebody else says it's a religious conflict, that we bring that and import it back into the United States and say, okay, so it's got to be a religious conflict here in the United States. And I think this is something we've really got to keep in mind is that there has to be a solution to peace. That solution to peace has to come by not over-determining the role of religion while taking the role of religion seriously. Rabbi Stanton, this is Katie Fang. I wanted to ask, there's been, and I even actually had this conversation with Jonathan Greenblatt from the ADL before you guys came on the show. It's, it's very easy to conflate this idea of being anti-Jewish and being anti-Israel when this is going on, when, when you kind of forget that this is a terrorist group that has perpetrated death and, and this type of brutality on people in Israel. Is, is that something that you're confronted with, Rabbi, when you're trying to have conversations with members of your own congregation, when you're trying to try to find some rationalization of what's going on here? People are really hurting because they're being called upon to be experts in a complicated geopolitical conflict. The idea that every individual Jewish person is somehow, first of all, responsible for the actions of the Israeli government, mm -hmm. second of all, all knowledgeable when it comes to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, and third, our expert theologians is an impossible responsibility even for a rabbi to bear, much less the average lay person. So there is undue pressure placed on so many individual Jews in the United States. And you add to this the, the campaign of intimidation and hate. The idea that the leader of Hamas would call for a global day of rage, a global day of jihad, essentially, against Jews all over the world, including the United States, has turned what could have been a very painful and complicated conflict in the Middle East into a global anti-Semitic campaign. And so we need to do our best to separate the two with nuance and love, but there is a real conflation right now of hatred of Israel and hatred of Jews, and it shows the evident relationship between the two. And I do think the two are deeply connected and that we need to work very, very hard to make sure that individual Jews in Israel and in the United States and around the world are not blamed for a terrible situation that is beyond the control of any government and any individual at this time.